is a six foot by six foot octagon box blind. Cost 750, maybe $800 to make if you buy all the materials brand new. I plan on raising it with a compact tractor. It'll get me about eight feet in the air to the floor. It can be set on four by four posts, which I'm gonna do, they're planted in the ground. You can use six by six posts or the elevator brackets. The corners are, are such that they'll accept the elevator brackets. It probably took me 25 to 30 hours of time to build this. If you had help, you might be able to do it on a weekend, but the thing I like most about this design is it can be used for gun hunting or archery hunting. And I've got seven windows to work out of. So if you've got an hour of time or so and you want to watch this video in detail on how to build this blind, stay tuned. Okay, for the base, what you're going to need is, uh, these are two by six lumber. And for the ends, you'll need two pieces that are exactly six feet long, 72 inches. And then four pieces that are 69 inches and they'll fit in between. And there's, and they are two feet on center. So we're flush on the outside here. This one's two foot on center and this one's four feet on center. And of course that one's on the end also. So four of them, 69 inches long. On the third one, rather than just uh, use a regular joist, which you can do and seam plywood on that, uh, plywood's four feet. So I like to have a little bit wider board here so that I can have room to screw both uh, of the seams of the plywood down on each side. It just gives a little bit more room. Not, not a necessary step, but I think this is about a four inch tall piece under there and then a three inch one on sideways so it's flush on the top. So I'll have a plywood seam coming right down the middle of this. And then I also had some pieces left over of, of treated, I used treated three quarter inch plywood for the floor. I think that makes a real nice sound floor. And you are gonna need two pieces to, to build this. Uh, unless like me, I had a couple of extra scrap pieces laying around. So I was able to buy one sheet for the main part and then I had two scrap pieces. So I put another one in a crossways here just to, cause I'm gonna have two pieces of plywood on the floor and there'll be another seam here and it gives me room to screw uh, the plywood on both sides. A little more room there. Um, if you just had, if you started with two full sheets of plywood, you'd put one right there and then you just rip the other one down and you wouldn't need that uh, cross member in there like that. You could also use uh, treated two by six around the whole thing and that'll save us uh, the next step. Um, but for me, I already had the lumber and I've got some extra aluminum fascia and you'll see what I'm gonna do with that. Okay, since the four corners of the stand are going to be exposed to the weather and the elements, I've taken four pieces of, it's actually metal fascia that I had, and I cut uh, four pieces 28 inches long and right in the middle, I made, a, I made a cut and I bent it in half. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna fit over the corner just like that so that when the, uh, when the stand is up, those will be covered and we won't get the corners won't get rained on or whatever. And again, if you use treated two by sixes for your base, you can eliminate this step, but I'm trying to save money, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I've got all four corners on, all four metal corners, that is. I just used two one-inch self-tapping wood screws to hold them down, one out towards each end. There's no need to put more screws in them right now. I mean, they can flap around a little bit because they're gonna, they're gonna be held on later with plywood coming down from the sides, the plywood floor on top of it. So no need to put a bunch of screws or anything in there now. I like to use screws for everything on the floor. I've used screws to put together the whole base and I'm using screws to put the plywood down. I don't like it to squeak when I'm in the stand and hunting so the screws will help keep the floor from squeaking. And if you want to take it one extra step you could put down construction adhesive or some caulking or whatever also to help maybe even reduce more squeaking. But if you do that, you don't want to put your uh, adhesive or caulking on the corners, uh, at least not yet, because we're going to be cutting those corners off, the treated corners, um, so that the siding from the stand can come down uh, and, and lap over the, the floor and butt against the floor from the outside. So it just will further prevent any leakage. That's the th one of the th extra steps you have to take if you're going to make an octagon stand. So that's why we're so we're doing it this way. I've got the plywood laid out, and now you can see why I turned that board on its side. I got a lot of room to screw both sides of the plywood down. When I put the other two pieces on there, it's gonna be good to go. So, and I used a quite a bit of screws. I've got them kind of preset already, and I'm gonna screw it down real well, and hopefully there may any squeaks in the future. So 
So I've got the floor plywood all screwed down now. I use a lot of screws, put them every, I don't know, six, eight, ten inches all the way around. Uh, something you could do right now, though, to save yourself a little time later is to not put any screws in the first 12 inches coming down. I put one on each end, but these again, these corners are going to be cut off, so if you put screws in there now, you'll just have to take them out later. So I didn't bother uh, 12 inches from each corner. I did not put screws in. I had them in there before, but it was, I had the floor assembled before, but those are just holes. But so first 12 inches on each corner, just don't bother putting screws in. It's not necessary. I put one right on the outside edge here so it caught the metal. Didn't want to hit the other screw that I put in there before, just hold it in place. So that's done that way. And one other important thing to keep in mind is when you put your plywood flooring on, you don't want it hanging over at all right here because our plywood sides are going to come down and we're going to fasten them to the uh, outside um, joist here. So if there's a lip, it's going to create a, a bubble in the wall coming down. So if, you're, if you cut your plywood square, you should be able to line everything up. I didn't have to do any trimming of the plywood. It's all flush all the way around. So I got my, my base was square. Uh, as I screwed it down, I put one in the corner, squared the thing up and then screwed the rest of it down. So just make sure you don't have any overhang because if you do, that's going to cause problems later. And if you did get it a little out of square, it's probably not the end of the world, but if you screwed it, unscrew it and try and get it square. Or if you have an eighth, even an eighth inch of a lip on your floor hanging over right here, just trim it off because we want to come down with that siding and not have problems later, and that'll save you problems later. So these here are the corner studs. We will need eight of them, and I'll show you how I made each of them. Rather than go to the lumber yard and dig through a pile of crooked eight-footers all day long and maybe find three that you can work with, I just decided to buy 14-footers and cut them in half because all these are going to be under seven feet. So each one of these was a 14-foot two-by-four that I cut in half. And out of these eight, they're all we have we have four different lengths. Uh, the shortest. Uh, two of them at 77 inches. The next length up would be 78 and a quarter inches. Two of them at 82 and three quarters. And then the longest are 83 and five eighths. So four 14 foot two by fours cut in half. That's the material for the corner studs. And the way I make these is I just take the table saw and pretty much crank the blade all the way up. I set the angle at 22 and a half degrees, put the rim fet, rip fence out two inches from the base of the blade so that I'm, I've got a two inch uh, piece left over. And then the other half of the, the other half of the two by four comes out, I mean it's pretty much cut equal. So I've got two inches on the top here as well. <clears throat> and then we just take the, take the, take the top, the top piece, flip it over and I just end up screwing it together just like that. So in this the longest one or any of them, there's probably about five screws holding them together. And I just put the screw in right off the corner there and the screw just runs down through just like this right through there. And there's yeah, like five or six in each one of these. Holds them together pretty well, makes them real strong. And those are the corner studs. To make the sides, we're going to need about six sheets of plywood. I use half inch plywood and then another two sheets for the roof. So about eight sheets in all. Uh, but for two of the sides, oh, and you could also use a half inch treated plywood for this if you wanted it to be completely uh, weatherproof and longer lasting. Uh, again, in an effort to save money, I will just use the untreated plywood and then use some leftover deck stain or something at a later time to uh, finish the exterior of it. But for two of the sides, you'll want to have, uh, the, it's going to be cut at an angle. One end is going to be 89 and a half. The other is going to be 84 and three quarters. So you've got an angle. So you take your full sheet of plywood, 89 and a half on the high side, 84 and three quarters on the low side. You'll need two of those. So that times two, and that'll be each side of the stand. 
Before we go ahead and put on the carpet and walls and corner studs and such, I'm cutting off all four corners. What I'm doing is I just want to make sure we've got four feet left over so that the side uh, plywood coming down the side hangs right down to the bottom there. It's going to cover that little extra bit of um, uh, corner metal. So I'm taking 12 inches off each way. So we are left with four feet right in the middle, 12 inches off each corner. I've gone ahead and cut three of them off and that's what it looks like. And when the, you know, one of the eight sides, the plywood will come down from the wall and then it will actually go in below and sit right on the metal. And then this piece will be tucked in up against that piece of plywood coming down. I, I like to do it this way so I don't get water intrusion underneath on these corners. It pretty much prevents that from happening. You could just set your wall plywood down right on top and run a bead of caulk on there, but I like to do it this way. It's easier to get the carpet cut right and it adds a little bit more rigidity to the wall. You know, coming in, it won't come in, move in and out here in the middle. And then you can get this down and keeps, yeah, again, keeps, just keeps the water out of there and adds integrity and helps you get that piece of carpet cut real good. What I do is just set my saw a little bit under three quarters of an inch in depth so I'm not cutting through the metal. I'm just not quite cutting through the plywood floor and I'm just using my utility knife to score the little you know, hair thickness piece of wood on the bottom left over. So all four of those corners come off next and then we can fit it for carpet. Now for the carpet, I went to the uh, local home center. Didn't find any remnants that were gonna fit, so I just ended up buying a six foot by six foot piece of marine grade carpeting. It actually came in a six foot width, so I got six feet of that. That's like a quarter inch thick. That roll was 20 bucks, and it's uh, like a marine grade or outdoor, so perfect for the floor of the stand. So this is what it looks like after I cut the carpet down to fit the base. I end up using these industrial scissors. They're, I don't know what they're called, claws or something. Uh, really nice tool for the job. Cuts through carpet, lots of other things. Pl um, cardboard, all kinds of other things. Works right for this. You could use a utility knife as, as well. But So all of these corners are cut off. And uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier is to make sure you save those plywood triangle corners because those will go back on later. And then when you cut your carpet, you want to make sure that it's not hanging over anywhere because it'll create problems down the road when we're putting the sides on. So as long as it's flush, or even if it's a little bit inside of flush, it's fine. You just don't want it hanging over. Before I go and set the walls, I'm going to go ahead and mark around all of the corner studs on the carpet and cut that around so that the carpet can be removable in case I want to take it out and dry it out or whatever. So. The next step will be to mark those corner studs on the on the carpet and cut it cut around it. I'd saved a short piece of one of the corner studs here that I'm going to use. I'm just going to use it as a mark marking device. Set it like that. Take my sharpie, go right around it, and I'll cut all eight of the corners out of the carpet so that uh, it's still removable. So I've got all the corners marked from the corner stud uh, piece that I had there. But rather than trying to cut everything perfectly all the way around, I just took something that was about that size, set it on there, and drew a circle instead. So I can just take one continuous cut around with the scissors. And then I went and basically cut that piece out of all of the corners going all the way around. So now I'll be able to just lift it right out, set it right back in there whenever I want. I put all my corner studs down and marked them, marked each of them for the length that they are. And on these plywood sides, we're going to use the, we're going to use the 78 and a quarter inch corner studs for the low end of these walls. And then we're going to use the 83, I'm sorry, the 82 and three quarter inch corner studs will go on the high side of these, of these walls here. So the next step is to screw the low side and the high side corner studs down to the wall. When I'm screwing the corner studs down to the plywood walls, I like to use, I'm not exactly sure what these are called. 
uh, but they're kind of a wide-headed screw with a Phillips head. I might have got them in the cabinet uh, area at the home center store. These, uh, these I end up putting about a foot apart. So in here I've got seven in one run. On the low side, I'll probably have eight screws in on the high side. They can be started about an inch in. The bottom one has to be six and a half inches up. I got the mark on the other side here because this is the outside of my wall on the other side. You could put spend more money and get a treated screw because they are exposed to the elements, but I found I built the stand 20 years ago with drywall screws and they're still in there. They haven't rusted off yet, so. Now once the corner stud is screwed down onto the plywood, you want to put the seam of the corner stud right flush with the edge of the plywood. And again, this is my six and a half inch mark right, right there. I'm set six and a half inches up from the bottom where that, this is the high side, so it was the 82 and a quarter, I believe, and the top will be flush at the longest point. You don't want it sticking over. If it is, trim it off because it'll cause problems for you later on, but that's, if you do it right, you got the lengths right and you got the right ones on there, you'll be flush on the high side at the highest point, and, but none you won't be sticking out anywhere past. One other thing I didn't mention earlier is I selected which side was better before I cut the long and short end off the top there. Um, I, I picked the outsides first and I laid the plywoods together with the outside the good side up on one and the good side down on the other. So I've got the corner studs attached to the outside of both of the plywood walls. Six and a half inches up from the bottom on both. Top should be flush. And on here, this shows, if you've got two of these, if you these match, if you have two of them laid exactly the same and both high sides are on that one and, the, and your uh, corner studs are facing up, then you did it wrong. They've got to be opposite. One has to be uh, high, high like that with the corner studs up and the other one has to be low on one end with the corner studs up. You can see this one goes from low to high and that one goes from uh, high to low. So this will be the inside and this will be the inside and they'll be opposite of each other and that's why they, they cannot be the same or it will not work. And once we put them up on the, on the, on the base you'll see what, that, what that's all about. Here's what it looks like with both of the side walls installed. You want to make sure that you've got your corner studs on the inside of both sheets. So if you put them together right, <clears throat> the good side is out of the plywood. Your corner studs are on the inside of each. You've got both low sides on one end and both high sides of the plywood on the other. If you assembled one of them wrong, they're going to be the same and you'll have one high end here and one low end there with your studs on the inside. But if you did it right, that's how it'll go. Both ends are high here, both ends are low there. I used about, about five screws along the bottom and then another five screws about five inches up so that we hit you know, the base there real well. And you want to make sure you put it where you're at the, the corners meet here, the corner of the, of the floor, you know, angled in right there. So we've got an inside corner right here. So when the, the, the plywood on this side will come right down, right over the, the corner stud and right over the floor and it'll, and it'll sit right on this on the metal here on the on the edge and we had the metal going back just far enough so it's probably tucked in underneath an inch or two so that's all covered and that makes that corner completely weatherproof an extra note here is I ended up deciding to put the door in the high side so that when you have water and rain and whatnot running off the roof It'll drip off the front of the blind where there's no ladder. I'm accessing this from the back. And so the ladder and the platform in which I get into the box blind will be on the door side. I don't want the water dripping off the roof and freezing up on my ladder and my access platform. It just creates a dangerous situation and makes it noisy getting in and out. So that's why I've got the high side on the back and that's where the door is going to go. This is what the short wall or the end wall will look like once it's assembled. I've taken a regular sheet of plywood and I cut it down to 84 inches. So it's 84 inches long, it's a square cut right across the end. And I've taken my two 77 inch corner studs and I've installed them on there with screws. You know, about six or maybe eight screws every foot going in. I took the good side of the plywood and put it down because I want that out. I left the knotty part with the holes in it on the inside, so that's fine. I set the 
Corner studs, six and a half inches up from the bottom, just like before. We want to make sure we have this lip here that goes on to the base, and we can screw it on there. Both sides, six and a half inches. And on the top, these 77 inch studs come a little bit short, but that's okay. We don't want them sticking past. If they are, you got to cut them off, or you made them too long in the first place. And then what I did with my uh, jigsaw is I notched out an inch and a half wide by three and a half inch notch, and that will receive a, the center rafter later on. So it should, a two by four should fit right in there and be pretty much flush with the top of the plywood there. And that notch is located exactly in the middle of the, of the plywood. I came in 23 and a quarter inches, made a mark, and then went out to 24 and three quarters of inches and made a mark, and then down three and a half, cut out the jigsaw. A lot easier to do it now while it's on the saw horses instead of later when it's installed on the box blind and you're up on a ladder. Now the short wall or the end wall has been installed. When I put it on, I paid close attention Make sure that the corners lined up right here so that when the plywood comes down the front, it's going to match real nice right there. Oh, I see I left one screw. I put five screws along the very bottom and then another row of five screws about five inches up. It's on there real good. We've got the nice side of the plywood out. We've got the notch up on top so when the center rafter is ready to be installed, it's already ready for that. So we've got three of the four big sides up. Three out of eight in all. What you want to do next is make your narrow wall boards or corner wall boards. And in order to do that, it takes two sheets of plywood. And for each one, I've ripped two 17 inch wide pieces and then the leftover is 14. And uh, once I get those 17 inch pieces ripped out, I take a good side up and a good side down that's gonna be the outside like before. And on the shorter wall, we cut it down so that on one side it's 78 and a quarter, and then on the other side it's 79 inches. So we got a three quarter inch difference from the top. And then, of course, there's two of them there. I put them together and cut them together so just to save a little time. And then on the longer ones, the short side is 83 and three quarters, and the longer side is 84 and three quarters. So there's a one inch difference on that one, even though there's a three quarter here, but in the end it works out. I don't, it's just the way it is. And then the two 14 inch wide pieces I didn't do anything with now. We'll use, we'll use parts of them later on. Before I install the corner wall boards or the narrow boards, I decided to cut the windows out first. And the measurements for that, if we use a basically a 10 by 32 piece of plexiglass for the window, which is what I'm gonna do here, the uh, opening is going to be a little bit bigger than that. So from the bottom, I'm coming up 17 and a half inches to the bottom of the window opening. And then to the top of the window opening from the bottom of this wall board, it's 50 inches to the top. And then the whole thing overall is 10 and a half inches wide. Um, and the, so the opening is 10 and a half inches wide by 32 and a half inches high. I'm coming in three and a quarter inches from each side. And that gives me the 10 and a half in the middle. I've screwed two pieces together so I can do two at a time. Save a little time here also uh, before I cut. There's a reason I didn't do it on these. On the, the four foot wide walls, you have an option to do all kinds of different windows. If you want to do uprights like we're doing on the corners here, great. Uh, if you want to put in a 24 by 36 slider or an old recycled window from a house or something, you've got a lot of room to do that there. Uh, it, it's up to you in the end. But uh, for, for the corners here, it's just a lot easier to cut these windows out while they're laying on the sawhorses versus being up, you know, cutting them while they're already installed uh, up and down. So that's the reason we're doing that now. A few pointers for you when you're installing the corner boards is to, it's a lot easier to just start the screws when they're on the sawhorses. So I've put all the screws in there, started them, they're 12, you know, 12 or 14 inches apart. And then once you put them on, you want to make sure that the tops are flush and you're not sticking out above one way or the other. These are actually cut by design about an eighth inch short or a saw blade or so. So they're lifted up right here a little bit just to make sure that they aren't too tall. And it's okay if they're not sitting right on here because they're just going to wick up 
water if it gets in there anyway. It's not going to get into the stand because this is lower than the floor, but it's okay to lift it up a little bit there to make it flush on top. It's more important to have it flush on top because this is going to be, this end I'm going to be buried and it'll be all clock shut anyway. When you put the corners on, you got to squeeze them together so that you have basically no exposed stud from the inside showing there. The two inside corners of your plywood should be butted up against one another all the way up. In the top here, before I put this screw in, I had to squeeze the sand, you know, squeeze the wall together to make sure we had a nice tight fit on the inside corners of the of the wall plywood here. Same goes for the other side. You want to make sure you just get that squeezed tight before you screw it, screw this piece on, and that's going to hold the whole thing together. Made it really firm with just the one corner on there. Next step will be just to go ahead and do the other three corners on there. Okay, I've taken the back two pieces, the narrow corner walls or whatever you call them. I got the windows cut out for them just like in the front or the shorter side. This is the higher side. I've paid attention to screw it closely to the corner stud, uh, basically having no extra gap on the inside corners of the two pieces of plywood there. And uh, I will affix the corner stud to it. This is the 83 and 5 eighths. The lat should be two left, the tallest that you had. It ends up going on there where you put the seam right at the edge of the plywood just like that. And you screw it from the top and all the way down. Just make sure you line it up so you've got that seam perfectly. The side here has already been done, so the corner stud is on there. I've got the screws all in. The seam on that corner stud is lined perfectly with the edge of the plywood so that when we put the back wall together, that'll be the screwing surface for the, the wall sheeting on the back. It's loose right now here. It's, you know, it's going in and out, but that's all right. It's going to get, it's going to get anchored down later in there. So it's time to make the rafters and I'm going to need five for now. So I've taken uh, five eight foot two by fours and I've measured them out. Two of them I've already cut down, the two shorter ones here, but if you don't have a miter saw, the best way to do this is to hook your tape on the end, mark the bottom at 91 inches, and mark the top at 91 and 3 eighths inches before you do any cutting. You need three of them done that way. This is a six degree angle, and if you have a miter saw, it'll go a lot quicker. Uh, but if you don't have a miter saw and you're just going to use a skill saw, this is the best way to do that. So hook your tape, 91 on the bottom, 91 and 3 eighths on the top. And then we need two of them at 72 inches also. So hook your tape on the end, 72 on the bottom, 72 and 3 eighths on the top. Gives you that 6 degree angle that you need. And then after you mark those and, and, and cut those, you also want to come back to the other ends with your skill saw or miter saw and cut the same the same angle off. This would be basically zero at the edge and then three-eighths of an inch out on top. So if you're not using your miter saw, that's, again, you just measure out three-eighths, mark your line, three-eighths to nothing, mark your line, cut that. So all five of the rafters need an angle. It's going slightly six degrees to the left. Same goes for the other end. It needs to be at the same direction. If you have one end this way and one end that way, it's not going to work. They both have to be this way. I've taken the shorter ones, the 72 inches. Um, one of them has to be flipped over so you kind of have them go, going, going in different directions. I like to pre-drill these holes before I run these screws in there so they, they're just less likely to split. This I think is a 5 16 inch hole that I pre-drilled, about 3 quarters of an inch, inch in from the outside. I did both ends that way. I started my screws. These are 2 and a half inch construction screws with a Torx bit. I think it's T25 Torx uh, head on them. They work great for this. If you like the inside of your box blinds to be blacked out, this would be a great time to paint your rafters, especially uh, the two 72 inchers and one of the 91s, because those are all going to be on the inside of the box blind. And it's it's only about 20 degrees right now where I'm working, so I'm probably not going to do this. If you do see them uh, painted black later in this video, it means I've taken them out and I've done it on a warmer day. But right now, I'm not going to do that. 
just for the purpose of the video. I'm going to show them how they're installed. Uh, but boy, great time to paint them black. It's a lot easier to do it when they're on the saw horses and uh, rather than trying to do it overhead uh, with a spray can or brush once it's already assembled. Here's a tip for installing those rafters, especially if you're doing it by yourself. I just run a screw in there to help hold up one end while I'm doing the other end. So these two rafters, the two 72 inchers, that's where they go. One goes on the inside of your corner stud here above this, uh, on, the, on, the, on the right, and then another one goes on the inside of your corner stud on the left. And when you put it on the lower side here, you want to make sure that you're flush with the plywood right, right there. You don't want it sticking up any over at all. You just want it flush. And the top, we don't really have, it's a little harder to gauge, so I've just laid this I've taken this two by four and I've just laid it across the top so it's actually setting on top of the plywood right there. So I've got a kind of a reference on how high I want to go up with these two rafters. Same here, it's just sitting on the it's just sitting on the plywood right there as a gauge. So when I when I screw this end on, I want to lift it up until it butts the two by four I have setting on there because I know that's the bottom of the plywood on the edges, and you want to be flush on the back corner stud here. You don't want it sticking out past either. It's got to be flush. And so on this one, I haven't screwed it on there yet. But what I want to do is push. I'm just going to push the wall, you know, can go in or out right now because it's loose. So I'm just going to push it right to where it's flush and run those two screws in. And I'm going to make sure I've got it lifted up also against that 2 by 4 sitting up there as a gauge. So you want to be flush on the back and you want to be to the top of the plywood on the top side of it. And that'll be those two inside 72 inch rafters. Now for the three longer rafters, or the 91 inchers, I flipped them on edge. So we've got the longer side up and the shorter side down. All three of them are on edge. I lined them up. I actually marked one, one end L for the low end and then the other end H for high end so that I kind of keep track of them all going in the same direction when I'm put, putting them on the box blind. And so I've hooked on the from the end here. I've made a mark across them 21 and a quarter inches. Uh, and this is going to help us gauge where it, where it goes on to the box blind in relation to the plywood siding. So 21 and a quarter, make a mark come up a little farther which is four feet past the last mark 69 and a quarter and make a mark across there also so your marks should be exactly 48 inches apart basically in the center of the rafters next you want to take one of your rafters and start a screw about three quarters of an inch inside of your mark on each end there and on the blind, on the box blind, I've started a screw just to help hold the the uh, outside rafter up here, three and a half inches down from the top of the plywood. I did that on both ends, and I forgot to mention earlier too, and I forgot this myself, that you really don't need to put a screw when you're on your plywood screw. You don't really don't want one on that upper three and a half inches uh, unless it's countersunk in where it's not going to stick out. I ended up lowering this one down. I'd kind of forgotten. Uh, that you really don't need a screw up there in that last three and a half inches so I ended up lowering them down so they're going to be underneath that. That rafter is going to get some support screws from the inside as well but this is how you kind of get yourself set up for it. Get those two screws in there three and a half inches down so you got something to rest it on if you're doing it by yourself. So the rafter's up there and it's just setting in place right now right on those screws that I had set. And the marks well, this is what they're for. So I line up with the edge of the plywood here, and this is your four-foot wall, of course. And one of the marks should add, meet the edge of your plywood right there. I've got the H because this is on the high side. I got the angle right that way. Down here, same thing. We got our mark set there right at the edge of the plywood. The pitch is right. This should be level with the way it, the angle is on the end of it there. I'm just putting one screw right in the middle. We've got the one and a half by one and a half or two by two, whatever you call it, underneath right here. And you know it ends at the top of the plywood here. So there's no need to put a screw away at the top. It's just gonna split the top of that two by two. So I just put one in the 
one towards the center, or you could even be a little bit closer below center on there. Uh, and one is good enough on each end. And the reason there, that one is good enough is because on the inside, we're going to go ahead and I've got four screws coming from the inside that are going to hold that on the wall also. So you got a lot of, a lot of strength holding that on there. Especially if you get a lot of snow load up in northern Wisconsin like we do. Maybe three feet of snow up there at times. The other side's already mounted too. It's on there. Got the two screws in on the outside. The one there and the one there. And then the four on the inside. So that's what the two... And then, oh yeah, when you put that on there, you want to make sure that you're flush. You want to be sticking out above the plywood. And you definitely don't want the plywood to be sticking out above this. It should just be flush because... Our roof sheathing is going to go right across there, right across the top of that. 